tear the sword of God or to tear the word of God and not back down and say, I am a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm in the army of God. I ain't going to bow down. I ain't going to give up. I ain't going to back up because you've changed the doctrine. Bless God, I'm saved out of my sins. I ain't saved in my sins. The word of God teaches me how to live right. The word of God sometimes, if I carry this long enough, he gets heavy and I'll get worried and I'll need a bite to eat. Glory to God. So I'll just lay it down and read me a few verses. Get back up and grab my word and go back to the streets. I go back to the people that are dying. I'm going to a devil's hell. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. He's my Along this winding road to the old familiar markers of his mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than I can explain. There's no other way to tell you than to say God's been good. sleep each night and though I've had my share of hard times by my side he's always stood through it all God's been good times replay and I can see that I've cried some bitter tears but I felt his arms around me as I face my greatest fears, I've had more gains than losses, and I've known more joy than hurt. As His grace fell upon me undeserved, God's been good in my dreams as I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. For God has been my father, my savior, and my friend. His love was my beginning, and his love will be my end. I could spend forever trying to tell you everything he is, but the best way I can say it is this, God's been good. In my life, I've been blessed beyond my wild. And sing, I'll fly away. Sun glad morning when the slap is over.
too. Ready or not. <laughs> ain't got no, no leather. No bait in there. I want to walk to the but Jesus took me in. In the middle of life, heaven filled my soul. Sure, I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, <coughs> I was looking around. I guess it's a bad thought I had, but I figured there'd be a bunch way out because the pastor wasn't here. Some did. <laughs> I guess that's a bad way to start off with, but the truth's the truth. There's a bunch getting cussed because the pastor wasn't here. And there's a whole bunch that'll repent on Sunday morning and just not show back up for a while and think everything's going to be all right. That ain't how it works. That ain't how the Lord works. The uh, reason we ain't got no power over God is because we got sin in our life. No, to do good and do it not. To him is sin. That's the Bible. We know we ought to be here. It's the truth, ain't it? Anybody happy tonight? Anybody got a prayer request? <clears throat> and it's Bill text me this evening and said the kid fell, slipped and fell and sprung like that she's on a building. I met on a foot. The kid fell in the church. Amen. And Tony White, I think Tony White had a heart attack tonight. Exactly sure what what happened. Does anybody else know exactly? Mm -hmm. Talking about doing the what was it? A couple nights ago, they went to the hospital, chest pain, and they were talking about doing surgery. I'm not sure what they were talking about doing. But I think it was a heart attack. Coronavirus 
remember the preacher is at Battle Back tomorrow. So. <clears throat> and then Pastor Lamont, he's preaching tonight. It's hard to stand in front of this room tonight, Trail. I know. <laughs> Sing a song. Somebody get one while they while I'm singing. Do you remember when you were drowning in a sea of sin, going down for the last time, but then you called upon his name, then he reached down his nail-pierced hand, and he lifted you out. So just remember where you were back then. Oh, and thank him for where you are now. And give him the glory for what he's done in your heart. He took you from sin and strife. And he gave a new start. And he took that broken life. And he made you complete. So take off those crowns of glory. And cast them at the Savior's feet. Right. Now do you remember when... With all your heart you long to serve him. But you didn't think that Jesus would ever do, could ever use someone like you. Oh, but look how he's used your life since he brought you out. So just remember where you were back then. Oh, and praise him for where you are now. And give him the glory for what he's done in your heart. He took you from sin and strife. And he gave a brand new start. And he took that broken life. And he made you complete. So take off those crowns of glory and cast them at the Savior's feet. Come pray. I think they gave us real quick before we pray. I wasn't gonna do anything tonight and try to stay out of the way, but God's been too good not to. We were doing a Bible study today at work, and I told told him a little bit. I told my wife, I told he said when they come in, I said discouraged again because you know I, it's a blessing to be able to get to do that at work because nobody will come out and sit and, and sit in there with you. It's tough. Right. It's hard to talk to yourself, so to speak, to try to. You know, there was another one guy, it's been me and him about the last three or four weeks now. So y'all pray that it'll you know, it'll take off a little bit better. And then if I ain't doing something right, y'all pray for me that I'll be doing everything what I need to do right. But we've been doing a Bible study last little bit on prayer. And 
And then DJ kind of hit on this, and this, my heart started beating, so I, I knew it was me just for a minute. But I'm going to read just a couple of things that I jotted down, just, just, to, just to touch base. Right, I just feel like we need to do this right before we pray, and it's hindrances to prayer. With what we studied on a little bit today, I'm going to wrote down 10 different things, and I promise I'm not going to preach, and I've got Bible verses to go with each one. If you want them, you let me know. I'll give them to you after church. But one is selfless purposes. We don't need to just be all about us. Number two, a hindrance to your prayer is sin. That's right. Simple as that. If you've got sin in your life, there's a hindrance. That's right. There's a roadblock right there. So we need to hit the altar and get that roadblock out of the way because we've heard other prayer requests. I can't pray for the other prayer requests if I need to pray for myself first. So as we get come to pray tonight, I want you to think about each and every one because I'm going to. I'm going to go through and examine self. The third thing is idols in the heart. And those can be friends. They can be pleasures, possessions. It can be business. It could be your reputation. It could be money. Or anything that comes before God is an idol. Woe is me. Not many amens coming out right there. There'll be a whole lot of old me's right there. Ooh. We're all guilty of that one. Yeah. Number four, ignoring the needs of others. Yeah. Church, we, we need each other. I needed your prayers for mama. Yeah. You need my prayers coming up too. Right. And we, we talk about it all the time. So I don't need hindrances in my prayer life. But when it comes time that you have a need, you need me to help you with. I need these hindrances out of the way. Like tonight, the mom's going to come to preach the word here in just right. a few minutes. We don't need any hindrances holding him back. Well, right. I need to be praying for Lamont. How am I going to do that? I'm going to have to be cleaned up right. myself. you got to get these hindrances out of the way. Number five is disobedience to God's word. He said it. You know, to do good and do it not, it's sin. That's right. Simple as that. Let's see what I get to. Um, this one's a big one. Not forgiving others. I'll give you that one. Go to Mark 11, 25 and 26 and read that one. It says, if you can't forgive others, we ain't going to forgive you. That's right. Bible. That's true. It ain't quoted word for word, but you go look it up. That's true. Right there. And this this is for the married couples out there. I said this today. Whole relationship between husband and wife. You just call it like it is. That's Bible too. Yeah. When the two are married, and man and woman. Now let's get that right. Man and woman. Right. They to join together as one. They're supposed to be one unit. So we need to make sure, husbands, we're taking care of our wives. It says love her like you love yourself. That's Bible. If you don't believe me, it's there. So First Peter three and seven. Unbelief. Just pure old unbelief. Simple as that. Lamont. Just pure unbelief. Number nine. Not abiding in Christ. John 15 and 7. I'll read that sometime. If he abides in you and you abide in him, he'll answer your prayers. Right. That's the Bible. That's yeah. kind of like the book of James and where it says resist the devil. He'll flee from you. That's the part we want to do. But we don't want to back up along to that first part and submit ourselves unto God. Right. Resist the devil. Tonight, we need to submit church, Ramsey, church. I'll say Ramsey too. But these hindrances of prayer, that's what's wrong with us, church. That's why we're not getting through. Yeah. That's why the house ain't full on Wednesday night. Yeah. You know, just call it like it is. I know there's coronavirus that's going on out there. And I know it, it, people are living in fear. I, I get that. I understand that. We need to be smart about it. But yeah. we need to assemble ourselves together when we can. We need to be here when we can. If the house of the Lord is open, we need to be here. If you're afraid to come in, be in the parking lot. Be here. No, let your neighbors know that, hey, just because it's out there, we're still coming on. Hey, we might sit in the parking lot, but we still want to come home. Right. You know, I've preached in the church. I've preached in the parking lot. I've done it both ways. It's easier to preach in the church it is because it's, you know, you don't know what I'm talking about. There's hindrances all across the land. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what I'm talking about today. We need to get these in the last one, not abiding in the truth. Not abiding in the truth. So as, as y'all come to pray, and I, I didn't mean to take over. I'm not trying to take over. I'm just telling you what's on my heart tonight. Hindrances in prayer. You know what? We'd be a whole lot better off. We, our nation, we say we're a Christian nation. We just lie through our teeth. Look at our election. Sure. Amen. Amen. Yep. I'm not trying to bring politics in church, but let's just call it like it is. Mm -hmm. This right here is black and white. You call yourself Christians, look where we're at today. Uh, hey, we're, we're voting for whoever, whatever, because you know what? In the last day, you said they call evil good and good evil. If that's not where we're at, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Read your Bible. Pray. Get these hindrances out of our way, church. That's what it's going to take in these last days to get on fire, to get back excited. We had a great service on Sunday. I praise the Lord for it. But you know what? Why not have a great service on a Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. 
and he'd take off and ain't many people here, but hey, we're two or three gathered together in his name, or my name, I'll be in a mist. Right. But you know what, how we're going to get him in a mist, we're going to have to get these hindrances That's out right. of our way. I know that ain't popular, Ma. That ain't popular so preaching. We ain't paving a good ground for you to stand up here at, but, right. we, but we are trying to help you. Amen. You know, talking about church, we're trying to help you tonight. We need to get these hindrances out of our heart. We need yeah. to get them out of our way. If there's sin in your life, simple as that, there's a wall between you and God. That's right. We've got to remove that wall tonight. Let's break down some walls, break the chains. Get those hindrances out of our life tonight as we come and pray. Go ahead. You know, I was thinking Sunday I had a real good time. I really enjoyed myself. And then Monday morning, the devil hit me right square in the face. He didn't, he didn't like that. He didn't like me getting fed because I got fed Sunday. I'm sure y'all did too, but the devil come right at me. He wanted to knock me down as hard as he can knock me because the Lord was trying to do something. The Lord was trying to move in my life, and here come the devil. And then uh, today, as the fellow told me that uh, it was really encouraging, he said, boy, I've been having some humdingers up there, ain't you? I said, yes, it's been, been pretty good. And he said, I just can't wait to get out of church so I can go online and watch y'all's services. I thought, man, that's pretty, that's pretty good. I like that. You know what? That's lifts me up, you know. I, I, I love to hear people brag on our church. I love my church, and I know I talk about it all the time. But I do. I love my church. And then I got to thinking, well, you know, what What are we going to do when our pastor's not here? Right. I was thinking, he's not here tonight. Well, what are we going to do when, when he steps down? Is the bunch going to leave? Is the bunch going to stay? Are we going to come together as one and try to see what the Lord wants for us to do and who the Lord's got for us next? Right. Are we going to pray for our upcoming pastor, whoever it may be now, the Lord will prepare them and send them and get them ready for us, because Papa's getting older, he ain't going to be here forever, and I don't know when he's going to step down, and I don't know what the Lord's got in mind, I ain't got a clue, but it ain't going to be forever, and I know I've heard him say, if he can stick it out to 80, he thinks he's done good, I don't know if that means he's leaving at 80 or not, but that ain't far, you know, we've, we've had him here for a long time, he's been the steadfast, he's been here no matter what, he's been here He's been an example to us, but what are we going to do when he's gone? You know, he ain't here tonight. What are, what are we going to do tonight? I mean, uh, it's saying serious. It, it's more than just our pastor. It's more than just coming because of our pastor. That's why I guess I had that thought about people not coming because the pastor ain't here and he won't know, but the Lord knows. I'm not here for the pastor. I'm here for the Lord. I'm here because I'm excited and i got something to do for the Lord. That's the whole reason I'm here. I'm here because I love all of y'all. I love every one of you. Ain't nobody I'm mad at in this place at all. I'm not upset with nobody. I ain't upset with nobody on Facebook. There's nobody that I'm upset with. I just want to see our church go on. Even after the pastors moved on, dead and gone. Even after our deacons and our teachers have moved out, moved on, dead and gone, whatever it may be, I want to keep going. And we got to get some life in us if we're going to keep going. We got to get our sin, sin out of our life, get stuff out of our weight of our prayer life so that we can pray for the next generation, so that we can pray for this generation and the ones to come. And the, You know, I, it's been on my heart a lot lately to pray for our next pastor. Who is it? Anybody know? Anybody have anybody? I mean, anybody have any idea? I don't know, but the Lord's got a plan, and I believe that we ought to be praying for him now. You know, and there's a bunch of my friends that's been on my heart lately. I've got, well, they've been on my heart for a long time, but I, I would ask you when you pray to pray for TJ's friends. Because there's a bunch that I used to run around with and a bunch that knew the Lord or, or know the Lord, but they just ain't going the right way or almost decided to go the right way. Their heart's been convicted, but they're not here. And maybe I ain't doing everything I need to be doing to show them or to tell them or to go get them. Sometimes we've got to put legs on our prayers and go talk to them, go see them, go visit them, compel them to come into the house of the Lord. Maybe there's some more I need to do. Maybe there's some more every one of us need to do. I know coronavirus has got us... Afraid to really go to anybody's house or talk to anybody, but I, I, I believe if, if the Lord wants us to go to somebody's house, he'll make a way and he'll make it all right. He'll, you know, it's, it's impossible to please the Lord without faith. So I want to have faith that I'm doing what the Lord wants me to and he's leading me in the right direction. And I want to have faith that our church is going to keep on and our church is going to stand together through it all, that we're going to stand together. I mean, it's more to me than just, than just this building or just my family or your family or just our pastor or any of the preachers here, it's, it's, it's about the Lord. This thing is serious. I mean business. It's, it's, a, it's a serious thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else got anything before we pray? Anybody? Yeah. Everybody come pray. I guess. 
your latest release. see what we need to take care of and get rid of, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We're on the altar right now. Let's, let, let us lay it out unto you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Not pick it up and take it back to our seats with us tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We love you and we praise you and we thank you for all your many blessings you bestowed upon us, Lord. We ask you to touch in our nation, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Our nation's leaders in this election, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would have your will and your way, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We need to pray for that tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We ask you to touch our, our local leaders and state leaders, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We ask you to touch in the hospitals and the nursing homes and the jails tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Just touch all across our land. Lord, touch our churches, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, just, just bring down conviction over all of us, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Convict hearts tonight, Lord. Let us know what a, what a hindrance is in our life tonight, Lord. And we may lay them out to you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I love you and I praise you and I thank you tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask you to bless Brother Lamont as he comes to stand with your word tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I thank you and I praise you for what I feel tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I love you, Lord. I just want, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for me, what you've done for this old boy. How you saved, saved my soul, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Save me from a devil's hell, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We ought to be shouting across the house tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, help us tonight one more time to get these hindrances of prayer out, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, help them get them out of our way tonight, Lord. If there's idols set up, let's get them removed tonight, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, help us tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. To see exactly where we're at and exactly where we need to be, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We want to be in the center of your will, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask you to help us, Lord. Help us take the next step for you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. As Brother TJ said, for, for Brother Bill, Lord, as they're traveling down the road, dear Heavenly Father, bless him and his family, Lord. Lord, for the upcoming new pastor of the church and other churches, Lord, as, as the other men of God are going on, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, because we want the church to go on, go on for you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you and I praise you and I thank you tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Thank you for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us. May you touch each and every prayer request that was made mention here tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I know I'd miss them all. We've got to name them all, Lord. We'd ask you right now, as only as we know how to touch each and every one tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Once again, we ask you to bless Brother Lamont, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. If there's a word or a thought or a song laid on anybody's heart, Lord, then we just let you, that we would get self out of the way tonight and let you have your will and your way tonight in your house, Lord. We love you and praise you. Thank you once again, most of all, for your son. You're sitting down here to die for our unworthy souls, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. Love you tonight, Lord. We just praise you and thank you for all you do. In Jesus' wonderful name, we do humbly pray. Amen. Green means go. If you can see what I see, if you can see what I'm looking at, pretty picture. Amen. I'm going to throw this thing at the wall. I can tell you that now. I'm done with it. It's not going to aggravate me. <clears throat> Stupid thing. <laughs> Y'all pray. Mm. Mm. <whistles> Nervous tonight. Mm. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me.
I would, but I left my words in the other Bible. I can't remember all of it, so I ain't going to try that one. <coughs> I brought my dad's Bible today. It being a veteran today, I brought my dad's Bible. He served in the Air Force. My grandpa served in the Korean War. All veterans, thank you for your service. Appreciate all veterans who all was in Hanover. We got one or two in here, but thank you for the veterans. But I thought as it being Veterans Day, I bring my daddy's Bible. <clears throat> Y'all pray for me. <clears throat> Nervous, scared to death. <clears throat> Not because of me, but because I don't want to let God down. All right. All right, I almost about did. I left my glasses at the house. I stopped at the family dollar. Six dollar pair of glasses. Yeah, don't tell Angie, because she'll kill me when I get to the house. I got five per at the house, but nary one with me. So luckily, I was in low gaps. So, oh, er, so then a quick U-turn, family dollar. So anyway, I look good in the $6 glass, ain't they pretty? Mind you, cute. Anyway, trying to lighten y'all bunch up a little bit. Lord have mercy. Huh? Mm, butch, I don't know, brother. It's about like cell block C. Yeah. Huh? Water rough. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Glory. I got my list of what not to do, by the way. I'm just kidding. Some of y'all might remember that list of what not to say, what not to do. I'm just kidding. Anyway, I love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. We're getting there. Make sure y'all are alive. Anyway, y'all pray for me. I got this message. Mm. Woo, it's going to be a humdinger. Mm. All right. Revelation, chapter number one. Y'all ready? Yeah. Huh? Y'all ready? Yeah. Bill's ready. Ain't nobody else ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Huh? We better be, because guess what? Jesus is soon coming to get us. Amen. Are we ready? Amen. Amen. We better be. Oh, all I heard about is the election. All we worry about Trump and Biden. Why are we so surprised? The Bible says it's going to happen. And we get all out of frame, don't we? Huh? We're going somewhere. Y'all hang tight with me. I've been praying hard about this all day. I've had plenty of days to sit at the house and ponder on it. I haven't been out of work for three days, but or since Saturday anyway. Had a lot of time to ponder and to pray. And the Lord will beat me. Yeah, Ramsey gets the stuff out of my life. So I can preach tonight. Uplift God who's worthy and, and worthy to be praised. That's what it's all about. It ain't about me. It ain't about Joe Biden, Donald Trump. It's about Jesus. Amen. That's what we have forgotten about as a church. It ain't about us. It's about Him. And getting the lost saved. Amen. It ain't about the elections. Because God's plans will fulfill itself no matter what happens. What we do, God's got a plan. Whether we like it or not, it's God's plan. Right. Amen? Because the Bible says so. So why are we all out of frame? Oh, Lord, you go on Facebook for two seconds, Lord, have mercy. Fussing and fighting and arguing about this, that, and other. Recounting the votes, recounting that. Who cares? Uh-oh. <gasps> now, easy now. Don't just hang on before you start shooting me. I care. Don't get me wrong. But it's not what's important. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants. Who are you? Hey, who are you? A servant of God? All right then. He said, I gave John something to tell his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. We read your Bible. That's probably the problem. We haven't read our Bibles so long we forget what's going to happen. Amen. Uh -huh. Well, me, come on. Yeah. Well, glory. He said, and sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So that's come straight from heaven to John. Amen. Y'all agree with that? Amen. Y'all got the same Bible I got. I know you do because it's 1611 King James. It said, God sent the word to John. And we believe the word of God, do we not? It's rough, but it's rough. Boy. Mm. All right, here we go. 
It said, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now, y'all ready? Here we go. It said, blessed is he that readeth. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa, I don't preach right there, Rams all night. It said, blessed. <laughs> Whoa, it said, blessed is he that readeth. That's our problem. We ain't read the word in so long, we don't know what it says. Amen. And we wonder why, what's going on? I don't understand, Bush, what's going on? Why is all this coronavirus? Why is this happening? Hey, the Bible says, these are the beginning of sorrows. It shall come to pass while you are Lord. Because we ain't read a word in so long, we forgot what the Bible says what's going to happen. Huh? How many times, if you read your Bible, how many times did the children of Israel will be punished by a wrong king? Huh? Nebuchadnezzar? Sound familiar? Huh? They misbehaved. God had to punish them. We want a king, so God gave him a king. So guess what? We cried Barabbas, we're going to get one. I didn't, but the whole majority did, didn't it? The religious people wanted Barabbas. Huh? Ain't that what we're at? The religious, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees. Hey, well, they said, give us Barabbas. So guess what we got? Barabbas. Huh? So hang on, honey. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Woo! Because the Bible says it's going to get worse. So that's why. <laughs> Woo, hang on. Yep. That's why I said, blessed is he who readeth the word. And they that hear the word. Hey! Not just do, but hear, the Bible says, of this prophecy. And keep those things. Uh-oh. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's right. Huh? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He said, blessed. Huh? And y'all got the same Bible guy, right? He said, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. What time is it, church? It's at hand. What time's at hand? Hey, Jesus is coming. Are you ready? That should be our biggest concern. We worry about everything else. Amen. And I ain't saying don't worry about the election. Because it's going to affect us. But that's not going to matter. When you stand before God. He's going to ask you, Butch, how many people did you win for me? Well, Lord, the election didn't go where I wanted to. So I had to sit in the house. That's not what we're here for. Our job as servants of Jesus Christ is what? To win the lost. That's our biggest and most concern ever. Now, how much money you make. Now, how many cars you got. How many boats, golf carts, campers. If you got a camper, you have a golf cart right there. And nothing wrong with that stuff. I like to have one. Don't get me wrong. But that's not important. Because I'm afraid we're going to lose a lot of stuff. Huh? Gas went up 20 cents already in two days in Galax. Went from $1.79 to $1.99. Poof. Miraculously. And we ain't seen nothing yet. Huh? Our freedoms are going to get slowly pulled away from us. We can believe it or not. So that's why I just said, let not your heart be troubled. I'm going to prepare you a place. Don't worry about what here. Just win them. Time is at hand for us to be on our job. Right. Our job is what? Win souls for Christ. Right. Amen. That's our first and foremost goal is winning souls for God. Is it not? Yeah. Ain't that what the Bible says? Amen. Go out and to compel them to come in. Go out in the highway and head and say, hey, there's a better way. But we're too busy to worry about fussing who won the election. Amen. And yes, it's important. I understand that. But what's more important? Somebody lost and dying and going to hell? Or who won the election? Because right. eternity is forever. Right. Election ain't before years. Huh? Mm-hmm. And now's the time for the church to shine. Yeah. Now's the time. It's time's in hand for the church. I didn't say the religious crowd. The church to shine. Right. Huh? 
Because we see what religious gets you. People of faith, we see what they believe in, don't we? <laughs> Murdering babies, homosexuality. They're people of faith. So is the Pharisees and Sadducees who crucified Jesus. Amen. Is that what the Bible says? They were the ones that agging the crowd all, wasn't they? Huh? Hey, Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. The religious people. The religious bunch. They all about the money. <laughs> Don't that sound familiar? Hey, nothing changed over 2,000 years. It's all about the money. Imagine that. They afraid they're going to lose their money. Ain't that where we're at today in America? Yeah. It's all about money. Oh, don't, don't touch my money. Don't touch my 401k. Which you ain't going to spend there a drop when you stand before Jesus. Boy. He will ask you how big your 401k is. He's got one bigger. Yeah. Amen. So the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace. Hey, I know it's the seven churches, but Mount Vernon could be one of them. He said, grace be unto you and peace from him, which is God, which is and which was and which is to come. So God said, hey, I ain't dead. I is and was and I'm coming. I'm going to send you peace, hey, and grace. Hmm. Hmm. I think he says in one of the Psalms, Grace and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. I'm going to close from searching there somewhere we can find it. So God said, what are you worried about? I'm going to send you grace and peace. Hello? If you keep my words. If you obey my commandments. A lot of ifs and buts in there, ain't there? But that's how it works. Amen? You got to do something to get something, right? If you misbehave, you got to get punished, right? Just. Noah? Huh? Scott? Are you youngins? If something happens, you get punished, right? I know I did. So guess what's happened to America? We're going to get punished. But he said, but grace and peace from God is coming. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ. Hey, hey. Not only from God, but from Jesus his son. He said, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth hmm. unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. If I don't get you excited, nothing will. Huh? Right. Hmm. It's tough here, boy. No wonder preacher be when we come tonight. He knows. I'm just picking. Don't get excited. He said, grace and peace, I'm going to send you, not only from God, but from my son. My only begotten son will give you grace and peace. Who's going to save you from your sins in his blood. Right. Huh. So, Butch, on November 11, 1978, where was you at? Oh. Right. But November 12th, I still remember, that's pretty good. Right. <laughs> November 12th, hey, hey. New Butch. New Miss Melody. So he's got something to thank God for. We all do. Every one of us said, if you're saved, we got something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. And Thanksgiving's coming up, and we thanked our troops. But when's the last time we really thanked Jesus? That's right. Go ahead. Huh? So without Jesus, we've got no freedom. Zero. And our troops and our servicemen, don't get me wrong. Yes, respect, grateful, love them. Church, they, they fought for our freedom. But without God, as we're soon going to learn, unfortunately, we're not going to have no freedoms. Huh? I've heard, Butch has heard probably more than I have, <laughs> but all his life, since 1970, he's heard, hey, be thankful to come to church. It's soon going to be taken away. Ah. Uh, huh? I heard all my life, too. I've been 50. And you know, I know it's young for some of y'all, young whippersnappers, but 50 ain't too old for my mom. I'm feeling it. 50's getting old for me. I heard all my life. Ah, oh, I go to church anytime I want to. Can we? Huh? It's coming to America. Ah. Oh. 
What's your Bible say? What's your word of God tell you? It's coming. Ah. That's the same Bible. <laughs> the same day as Noah. They was eating and drinking part and having a good time. Ain't that what we're doing right now in America? Huh? They said, oh, I ain't never going to rain here. I bet they thought different. That first raindrop fell, didn't it? Huh? It's not going to happen in America until the North Carolina State Police is in front of this door and ain't going to let you in. Or nice to go. I don't know who they have here. Oh, I ain't going to happen down here. We voted for such and such. You'll never let that happen here. Well, the president says so. Executive order, it'll happen. He's already going to make you wear a mask. It's coming. I heard that debate, wear a mask, not wear a mask. Lord, here we go again. That's just one of them, of many. But the time is at hand, church, for the church to say, hey, that's not important. It's where are you going to spend eternity? Huh? Where, if you died today, where would you spend eternity? We had a lot of deaths recently around here. Two teenage kids lost their life at 100, Carroll County. Car wreck. Four of them. Two died, two's not good. That's two. Shooting, run up, die, boom. All kinds of stuff going on. Eternity, boom, right then. Right. The time is at hand for the lost to see something better than what we're giving them. Yeah. My boss spoke to me the other day. So what do you think about this election? I said, well, it ain't good. He said, well, how can a person sit in church on Sunday and say, praise the Lord, and vote for killing babies? I said, they can't. He said, ain't right. I said, no, it's not right. I mean, it's not right. So he's lost and can see it. And he's seen the ones that's in church that's a voting for it. So why go to church? Huh? Why would get saved if the church says it's okay? Right. Huh? If the church says homosexuality is okay, if the church says aborting babies is okay, why get saved? Because that's what the law sees. They don't see the true church. Because the true church <laughs> is sitting at the house asleep. Amen. Oh, yeah. oh me. Not all of us. There's some who do good, but if you go to jail, well, you probably used to go to jail, but he does different things. I know we do different things, but the church as a whole has went to sleep. The church as a whole has gotten farther and farther from God than we ever had before. Obviously, we're supposed to be a religious, religious country, but religious and Christians, two different things. Amen. I know, it's just not popular. No. But listen to verse 6. <laughs> when Jesus washed you in his own blood, guess what he done? He said, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Who is us? Hello? Y'all awake? Who is us? And hath made us king. Who's us? Thank you, Miss Emma. Servants. His servants. Verse 1. To his servants. Us. Through Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. Not man. Unto God. So our job. As a priest and a king is to what? Save the lost. Amen. To show them there's a better way. Rams, there might not be but two of you, brother, but don't give up. Amen. Have your Bible study. Amen. Keep going strong. Let them see. That's the problem. We start out. Come on, church. I've been to Mount Vernon a few times. We want to go visiting. Are we still visiting? Come on. Huh? Come on. I remember you used to come here Saturday morning to go visiting. What happened? I ain't been here in a while, but we don't go visit neither. We got all these big ideas too. Oh, yeah, yeah, about one week. Boom, that's it. Nobody shows up. Well, I can't today. I got too much to do. Got to work. Got to do this. Got to go here. Got to do this. Run, run, run. Go, go, go. And the lost man dying and going to hell. Right. Oh, me. Oh, me. Right. I'm pointing at me too. I ain't throwing no stones at y'all. I'm talking about me. 
I got lost co-workers. I got lost family. What am I doing about it? Not doing a good example, that's for sure. Oh, me. I've been the worst example ever as a Christian. Oh, me. Time to improve. To let him see Jesus in me. Amen. It's time for me to get strong in the Lord. And how you do that? By reading his word. And by praying. Huh? How do you cast out devil? The Bible said? Pray and fast. Bless you. Books can verify for that. It works, don't it, brother? Huh? Praying and fasting. Mm. When's the last time we've done that? Praying and fasting. I look pretty healthy. <clears throat> so do I. It said, To him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. First Peter chapter number two, verse number five. Said ye also, as lively stones, not dead stones, lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. TJ's been harping on it. Not harping, but been talking about it, but harping on it. Randy's harping on it. I feel the same way. Our house ain't spiritual as it used to be, Mount Vernon. Cold Creek, where I go up there. Hey, we ain't spiritual as we used to be. I've come here for 14 years. Y'all ain't spiritual as you used to be. I know some people's left, and things have changed. I remember my first coming here. It's a lot more shouting, a lot more hollering, and taking victory laps than he is now. That's right. What's changed? God ain't changed. I know we're getting a little older, and the bones don't work quite as you used to. I watch y'all on Facebook too, by the way. I got my eye on you. I see you youth choir first singing and doing good. Youth choir is good. What happened to the old choir? Huh? Love you, brother. He's talking about you, Butch. <laughs> but I remember when we had the choir. And when the choir sung. Huh? Huh? They get loose, Butch. I remember, I ain't that old. I remember to get up there singing. They start shouting up in the youth thoughts and come running out down here. People in the house being, woo, shouting. I remember Miss old, uh, the whole, help me, Lord. Vera, there we go. Shan's mom, first come down here. Mother in law told me to come down here. You know, I grew up in a quiet church. I got down here, y'all loud down here. Now y'all got loose, and then, hey, woo! Miss Janice hard, Miss Vera, and somebody, I forget who was over here, started hollering, Lord, mercy, that man went out the back door. I wasn't used to that. What happened? They're not here, but who's going to take up their spot? Amen. Hey, like uh, TJ said, Bill ain't going to be here forever. Who's going to take his spot? Amen. Your deacons out here, who's taking their spot? Amen. Where's the shouting at? Huh? Where's the victory laps? I ain't saying you got to do it all the time. No, I'm not saying do it now. I'm saying, but where is it at? Who's going to take their place? Right. Not just this church, all the churches. These young ones ain't going to do it, I'm afraid. Sorry. Because they ain't getting shows. Right. Is Skyler going to know? I don't know his name. I don't, even, I don't know how these people are. Jackson? Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Lex. Ha ah, ha. Woo. I should know them names. Alan? Mary Grace? Anyway, I know her name. Emily. Emma. Emma. Uh, so let's start with the E. She going to know? I can't remember the boys. Bo and Bentley and. Yeah. I know we all start with the B. <laughs> Were they going to know what to do? Right. Noah? They see it once in a while, but then what do they see? Back to the routine. Right. Same old, same old. Coming to church. Well, okay, we'll be out here by 12. And you don't have to be here to one to have a good service. You can be here five minutes to have a good service. Right. 
10 minutes. You don't have to be here all day. Guilty. It's how we come into the house. Hmm? It's how we leave the house getting to here. Huh? I was by myself come there and I had a good time. Didn't have to fight with nobody, but she should be by myself. No argument with the wife because she's at the house sick ish. So all by myself, throwing some McCamey's, having a good old time. Felt good coming in here. Why well, ain't that every time? It should be. I'm talking about me now. I ain't talking about none of y'all. I'm talking about me. I should come into the house. This house, any church I go to, I should come in with praise and thanksgiving. Right. Amen. So that way when I go back out yonder, like TJ said, Monday morning, tomorrow morning at work, when the devil shows up, I'll step out the door tomorrow, ready to fight the battle. Because the time is at hand. The time is here, church, for us to be ready to fight. The battle is coming. Are we ready? Huh? We say we are, but are we really ready? Hmm? Time's at hand. He said, we're alive and stone, build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So I can't give nothing to God except I go through the Father, who is Jesus Christ, my Father. So you can sit here and say, oh, you ain't done nothing unless Jesus says so. Amen. So I have to present my body a living sacrifice so I can lift up spiritual sacrifices to God. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Verse number 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, hmm, that ye should shew forth praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what we're supposed to be. A peculiar people. A zealous people. Showing somebody there's a better way. I know, for example, I, ain't, I can't speak for Butch, but I about guarantee he did. If he found something good to drink or something good to smoke, you told somebody, didn't you? I did too. Huh? But we get Jesus and we keep it under wraps. Not all the time. I try to at work. It's hard. <laughs> Jennifer and Daryl can bounce me. It's hard to factor. Some people are going to bust upside the head a few times. <laughs> it's hard. But you got to step back and remember, they're lost. I was the same way they was 20 years ago. Blinded. Had no clue. All I cared about was drugs and alcohol, just like they did. All I care about is the world. What's going on? But our job as Christians is to show them, I got to hurry, a better way. He said, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So everybody's going to see him. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, hang on, I'm getting there. Y'all with me? I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Hey, in tribulation. To say good times all the time, did it? And in the kingdom of, and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that's called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, and to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, to Pergamos, Pergamos, and unto, I can't pronounce that word, and Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea, Laodicea, close enough. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, listen, church, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 
We're going to see them eyes, church. Them eyes of fire. We're going to stand before on judgment day. Are we ready? Huh? Are we ready for judgment like we think we are? Hmm? I hope we are. And his feet like it to brass, as if they were burned in a fire. Ah, come on. Hang with me. Come on. And his voice as a sound of many waters. And he had his right hand seven stars out of his mouth with a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in the stream. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Hmm? We're going to do the same exact same thing. How many of them being guilty? Boy, when I get to heaven, I'm going to do this, this, and this. I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to do exactly like John done. If we make it to heaven. And we get through the gates. I said if. Because the Bible says everybody says, Lord, Lord, I ain't going to enter in. Uh-oh. Right. Hmm, I hope. I, I, I'm trying my best anyway. I can't say I hope. I know, but do I really? Think about that now. I mean, it's a harsh thing to really think about it. Oh, I've been saved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Lord, help me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, I've been saved for 20 years. But the Word of God says, everybody that says, Lord, Lord, won't enter in. But they that do the will of my Father. That's who's going into heaven. If you keep his commandments. And the Bible also says in the scriptures, you think you have salvation, but they are them that testify of me. So the scripture, oh, the Bible scriptures. Yeah, scriptures is good, but if you ain't testifying, if you ain't testifying to the scriptures, what good are you, Butch? Huh? I love Jesus. Really? I don't see it. I don't see you never smiling. I don't ever see you happy, Butch. Well, you love Jesus, that's, you should be a change, amen? I was happy when I was drunk. Get a few beers. Well, I was excited, Tom. I was happy then, woo! Huh? Now we get saved and we're dried up as yesterday's puddle. Huh? Not all the time. Once in a while, we'll get a little juice and we get all excited. Woo! Go out tomorrow. By tomorrow evening, we're done. Time to get off of work, get to the house. Poof, recliner pops up, we're done. Huh? Nah, that's not. It's just, it's just a few of us saying. Huh? Get off work, hit the recliner. Woo! Yep, eyes closed, mouth open. Huh? Nah. Huh? Most of us. Not all of us. That's my, that's my guilty. Get off of work, get in the chair, get warm, get cool, whatever you want to call it. And it keeps me cold, it's mostly cold. Get my blanket, wrap up, get warm. Take me to nap. About 5, 30 or 5, I wake up. Do some stuff. I mean, wonder why. I wonder why. I'm not as close as God as I should be. Mm. Anyway. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. Fear not, church. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Mm. He's got the keys. I don't, you don't. So you're not getting to his house unless he says you are. Huh? And the Bible says... <laughs> If he don't know you, you ain't getting in. But I've been to church all my life. I've been to church, going to church for 60 years. Don't make no difference. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Well, I, mean, I was saved back in 1965, 19, 2000. I was saved 20 years ago. And? You didn't love me because you didn't keep my commandments. But Lord, I sung the preacher's choir. I pray. I did. I cast out devils. They wasn't lost. You can't cast out devils. You lost, can you, brother? Huh? But you done prophesied in your name. I done things. Uh oh. 
I done things. Hmm. But you didn't testify of him. You didn't tell somebody about him. You didn't tell the lost that there was a better way. Because the Bible says in the scriptures you think you have salvation, but they are there to testify of me. You got to testify of Jesus. He loves you. Right. Amen. John 3, 16. Oh, I can say it all the time. John 3, 16. That's good. About 15 and 17. Huh? John 3, 15. John 3, 17. I didn't condemn the world. You condemned already. I was condemned, but you had to tell me I was drunk. I know I was. You had to tell me I used to be a dope head. I know I was a dope head. And you had to tell me. I know. I know TJ was. Well, every time he come to Bojangles, but I didn't get on to him. I wanted to kill him. <laughs> get me in trouble. <sighs> but I loved him. Showed him love. Tried to the best of my ability to show him love. To show him, hey, I still love you. There's a better way. That's our job as a Christian to show. Hey, I know this world is crazy. This election got everybody all out of frame. And it, rightfully so, I agree. But that shouldn't be our biggest concern as Christians. Huh? Our biggest concern should be lost loved ones, lost neighbors, lost co workers, lost. Period. I've got several lost in my family. I'm sure we all do. And I'm just saying, I've got several brothers lost. My brothers lost, my nephew. Several people lost. They know better. They've been in church. We all went to church together. We all used to drink together. But I've got saved. Now it's my chance to show them there's a better way. Show my co-workers. Uh, and it's hard. Uh, I, y'all pray for me on that one. I got to show out yeah, push my, my co-worker. <laughs> there are those I'm talking about. Woo! Yeah, y'all pray for me on that one. Uh, he's a jewel. But anyway, it's hard. I mean, one thing's done a certain way. Don't go that way, but anyway. But time is at hand, church, for God's people to stand up for what's right. And it's the Bible. Nothing else but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And on the third day, He rose again. That's all that matters. Because the biggest thing I think most of us is worried about Come January, how's it going to affect us financially, job-wise? And I ain't say, saying say, don't worry about it now. But Jesus said, I'll take care of you. I've heard Mr. Butch say that many a times. If there's a cracker left in Surrey County, he's going to get it. Am I right, brother? Close to it anyway. Yeah, he get a corner, yeah. I'm the same way. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've been there, lost. Very had nothing to eat. And as you can tell, I ain't been without for a while. For 20 years, God's took care of me. Provided, Lord have mercy. If I had time, I'd tell you, I can't tell you all the time that God's took care of me and my family. Food. Mm. Nothing to eat. Going to Walmart or just a roll of quarters to get money. Just get a loaf of bread and a dozen eggs to eat all week. And find a hundred dollars in the cash register. Oh, that's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. And somebody done it on purpose. Because they had a hundred dollars wrapped up in the receipt. And it was there for 45 minutes in a self checkout at Walmart. Coincidence, as John Freeman would say, I think not. She couldn't went to any other cash register at Walmart, but she happened to be at that one. Went up there to get our dozen eggs and a loaf of bread with the roller quarters. And looked in there and got the piece of paper out. It was $100. Five $20 bills. You can see the receipt and debit card. We'll draw 100 And you wrapped it around it. Stuck it in there. She come back over there all the way there. Smiling. I said, well, honey, I found this $100 bill. Or $100. Well, praise the Lord. That's just one. 
And so far, cancer free. So far. She's hard headed like her mama. I'm going to walk with her. <laughs> nah. But so far, cancer free. God answered me in the prayer on that situation. I mean, I can go on and on. Son in church. Granddaughters in church. Wife in church. I said, his age, I was drunk. Lost, dying, going to hell. Nothing I done huh, but Jesus. <laughs> Woo, that's Jesus sitting back in that corner. Not me. Jesus. Because if he could follow daddy, he'd be in a bad shape. Like I followed my daddy and my grandpa. They all was alcoholics. My grandpa, my dad, me, my brother, my cousin, the dog didn't drink. It's all we lived for. My dad got right, he got in church, but still, it was there. That's what I've seen, examples. I ain't been the best example, but my son's seen, his dad ain't been a drunk or alcoholic or a drug addict for 20 years. All because of Jesus. Got a wonderful family. I'm glad he come to here. I'm glad he stayed here. Glad he let, let a, found a Christian wife. I mean, things, you could go back and look at all what ifs. We all could, couldn't we? What if I done this? What if I done that? But thankfully, he stayed in church. And I hope he always does. But anyway, I know this ain't been a, a great message, but anyway, the time is at hand, church. Now's the time for the church to show the world what being a Christian really means. Not religious, Christian. Really means. Amen? Anyway, I won't hush and get you out of here. Cut this thing off. Love you, church. Appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity. I know y'all had to do this with this. <laughs> I love you, Mount Vernon. Y'all always in my prayers. I'll be here to you can fix it later. It's still red. Fix it in a minute. But anyway, I love you, church. Y'all still my home. You still my family, whether you like it or not, you still my family. But anyway, I love you. Not fussing at you, church, by no means. I just want us to realize time is at hand for us to get ready for the battle is to come. I mean, it's getting closer. I'm going to hush. I know I said that about five minutes ago. I'm going to hush. But anyway, anything on anybody else's heart before we get out of here? Nothing else on anybody's heart. Boy, y'all, here. Nothing. Nobody got nothing.